Sports. We are Black Hawk. We are St. Louis. This takes some talent. Don't spill that hot coffee on a cold night here in St. Louis. And Chris Carpenter did not do that. The Cardinals welcome in the Pittsburgh Pirates for the first time in 2011, game one of a three game series. The Cardinals salvaged a game over the weekend against San Diego. The reason why, Rick Horton, the lefty Jaime Garcia. A lot of concerns about Jaime coming out of spring training. He had a rough spring, but he was outstanding here yesterday. Four hits, no extra base hits, nine punch outs. He was in control throughout this ball game. Got the right pitch when he needed it. The Pirates come in with a record of 2-1, and one, and the Cardinals with that win are 1-2. With Rick Horton, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Delighted to have you with us for baseball tonight. And, Rick, give me your thoughts on the opening series. Well, the Cardinals would like to have won two out of those three games. They had two well-pitched ball games. Chris Carpenter was outstanding on opening day, but they couldn't finish the job, lost in extra innings. Jake Westbrook lost his control in game two. But if you have two out of three good starts all year long, the club will be just fine. Kyle Loesch's turn to have fun here tonight. And he was exceptional in spring training this year. So Loesch makes his 2011 debut when we come back after this timeout. A look back to some of the top moments of 2010.
playoffs a year ago, it still was a successful season for these 10 reasons. Here's Jim Hayes. Jaime Garcia's 2.7 earned run average was the 10th best for a Cardinals rookie in the team's history. The last Redbird rookie with an ERA under 2.70 was Dick Hughes back in 1967. The Cardinals finished 10 games above 500 for the ninth time since La Russa's arrival. Nine such seasons is as many as Whitey Herzog and Red Shandienst had with St. Louis combined. Adam Wainwright's five complete games during the 2010 season gives him eight in his career. And of Wainwright's 33 starts last season, only eight of them were not quality starts. Before the 2010 season, Matt Holliday signed a seven-year deal with the Cardinals, the richest contract in team history. And in honor of fellow Oklahoman Mickey Mantle, Holliday switched his number from 15 to 7. For the sixth straight season, the Cardinals reached 3.3 million in attendance. Only the Yankees, Phillies, and Dodgers drew more last year. Last season, five members of the Cardinals were invited to the Midsummer Classic. It was Adam Wainwright's first All-Star selection, Yadier Molina's second, Chris Carpenter's third, Matt Holliday's fourth, and Albert Pujols went for the ninth time in his 10 big league seasons. Of Albert's 10 big league seasons, 2010 was the fourth time he finished second in the MVP voting. In 10 seasons, Albert has collected three MVPs and four second place finishes. What did Stan Musial collect in his 22 seasons? How about three MVPs and four second place finishes? For the third time in the last 20 years, a Cardinal catcher has won three gold gloves. When Mike Matheny won his third gold glove with the Cardinals, he was 33. When Tom Pagnazzi accomplished the same feat, he was 31. Molina, he's only 28. Adam Wainwright's 20 wins and 2.42 ERA were both second in the NL, leading to his inevitable second place finish in the Cy Young voting. Didn't help that Roy Halladay threw two no hitters. Albert Pujols on August 26th hit home run number 400, becoming the first and only player to hit 400 home runs in his first 10 seasons. He also became the only player in history to collect at least 30 home runs, 100 RBI, and a 300 or better average in the first 10 years of his career. three here in St. Louis, but there's some other news and notes to get to. Kyle Drabeck, six and a third of scoreless, no-hit baseball in his Major League debut. The Royals, two walk-off home runs against the Angels. They won three of four, and some series sweeps to get to as well. well I think the big surprise is Baltimore's sweep over Tampa Bay. Baltimore not expected to really do well this year with the young players they have. Texas, Philadelphia, and the Cincinnati Reds all should have 
very good season. Cincinnati sweeping the Brewers. Game four this season coming up, and Kyle Loesch getting the start for St. Louis. A closer look at the right-hander when we come back. ERA in his first season were both career highs. Since then, Kyle hasn't been himself. And he hit rock bottom last year on May 22nd, when a forearm injury almost cost him the rest of the year. Loesch did come back in 2010, and his last start of the year was seven innings of three-hit shutout baseball. Combined with this year's salad spring, Kyle Loesch looks to get his career back on track starting tonight.
This in Baseball is brought to you by Bud Light Live. The just right taste of Bud Light with a refreshing splash of 100% natural lime flavor. By Chevy, see your Mid-America Chevy dealers. By Southwest Airlines, new rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. By Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, number one in quality tires and expert auto service. And by Steak and Shake, life needs flavor. Along with Rick Horton, I'm Dan McLaughlin, Adam Wainwright. It was Joe Mather about this time last year that they worked on this. And now it's Colby Rasmus and Adam Wainwright. Just like Rick used to do back in the mid-80s. <laughs> oh boy, I hope not. That's a little bit too intricate for me. I don't know. I don't know if I could remember that much. Here's a first pitch and a ground ball from the seat of his pants. Freeze, and he takes the hit away. David Freeze, an outstanding play to his left. The first play of the ball game. The Pirates come in with a record of two and one. They won two out of three at Wrigley Field. Tabata, we just saw him. Off to a good start. Then Neil Walker, Andrew McCutcheon, Lyle Overbay, Pedro Alvarez, Ryan Domit, Garrett Jones, Ronnie Cedeno, and Charlie Morton, their pitcher, batting ninth. Southwest Airlines starting lineup. Freeze has shown he's a very good defensive player, and he makes that throw from his backside right on time at a good start for Kyle Loesch. Freeze was not in the lineup. One game out of the three against San Diego, and Tony La Russa was indicating that would probably be the case, especially early on in the season. One ball, one strike on Neil Walker, the number two man in this lineup against Kyle Loesch. He's batting 308, one home run, and he's already driven in five RBIs. I asked David if the cold would bother him a little bit with the ankle. You know how you've got that injury. Maybe the weather might make a difference. He said, no, he's fine. He was very thankful for the way the Cardinal trainers and the coaches took it easy with him in spring training. That pitch is in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. And Kyle Loesch, speaking of spring training, was outstanding. His record a year ago, injury plagued, was 4-8. and eight. The spring training positive was his slider. I hadn't seen that slider from him in a long time. He had an outstanding season the year before for the Cardinals, but the high ERA last year, I think the arm injury and not being able to throw that slider was a big difference. First strikeout for Kyle Loesch. The 6-2, 32-year-old. And the defense behind Loesch tonight. Alan Craig with Matt Holliday out is in left field. Colby Rasmus in center. Lance Berkman in right. We just saw Freeze at third. Terrio at short. Schumacher at second. Pools at first. And the battery tonight presented by Dobbs, Kyle Loesch, and Yadier Molina. Andrew McCutcheon was their leadoff man a year ago. He moves down in the lineup. He is the number three hitter. And many consider him to be their top prospect. Great speed. Has a little pop at 12 home runs a year ago. And had one home run in the series against Chicago. Set out Sunday's game with a neck injury. He was diving the warning track at Wrigley Field. Jarred his neck, so stayed out of that game. One ball and two strikes. And one thing that Loesch did in spring training, he did not walk a man and struck out 15. Command, very important for him. He's got to hit his spots. He's got to stay out of the middle of the plate. Not a 95-mile-an-hour fastball, but he's always, always has got the good movement. I think that's really what sets him apart. He was telling us in spring training that he felt like his arm, you see what Loesch has done against McCutcheon, but uh, his arm always felt like it was an ice in trying to come back and then get a feel for the baseball. But he's off to a good start here in 2011 in his first inning of work, a pair of strikeouts.
Whitman, St. Louis. And there's no score. Cardinals line up with Ryan Terrio leading it off, and then Colby Rasmus and Albert Pujols here in the first. Lance Berkman, the switch hitter, will bat cleanup. Then Alan Craig, David Fries, Yadier Molina, Skip Schumacher, and Kyle Loesch. Cardinals face a right-hander tonight. Finished up last season very well, and that is Charlie Morton. And by all accounts, had a fairly decent spring. They're expecting big things from this righty. One of the things they're saying about him is he's learning how to pitch. You think you'd learn that before you get to the big leagues, but he's been a guy who's got good, uh, good stuff and a lot of promise. But he just really just thrown that fastball hard, not really tried to get location and movement. But he's learning to throw a bit of a sinker now, and is getting better results. One-one pitch, hit to the right side, and a foul ball as Dave McKay is there. Remember that with Joel Pinheiro, and he was with the Cardinals. It's uh, it's almost uh, amazing to me that pitchers have to kind of beat your head against the wall about five times before you realize you don't have to throw the ball as hard as you can every pitch to get results. And back in 2005, Baseball America talked about Charlie Morton having the best curveball in all of baseball in the minor leagues. But they've tried to get away from that at times as Terry O grounds it to short. Ronnie Cedeno is there for the first out. Clint Hurdle is the new manager of the Pirates, and here's a look at his defense. Top it up, McCutcheon and Jones in the outfield. Alvarez, Cedeno, Walker, and Overbay along the infield. And it's Charlie Morton and Ryan Domit, the Dobbs Pirates defense. Ninth season as a manager, and the majority of that spent with the Rockies, and now with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He spent some time at MLB Network, did Clint Hurdle. Clint Hurdle made his major league debut at the age of 20 back in 1977. He was a can't-miss prospect, never really put it together, was on the cover of Sports Illustrated as a guy that was just going to be the phenom of the future, and it never really quite come to be, but he really did have a nice career anyway. Quickly, two outs, and Morton off to a good start. That brings in Albert Pujols with two outs and nobody on. It is odd when you look up and you see uh, the scoreboard, Albert Pujols hitting 1-5-4. I don't think we'll see that number begin with a 1 for very much longer. And I guarantee it won't be that on September 29th. So two outs and nobody on, and Pujols homered over the weekend. A solo shot to account for his one RBI this year. Ground ball as he fisted to third base. And Morton sends the Cardinals down one, two, three. Lyle Overbay leads it off when we come back. No score after an inning of play.
five and one in his career against the Pirates. Cardinals have beat around Charlie Morton pretty good, but he is a different pitcher, as you mentioned, Dan, from about five starts to go in the season 2010. He really changed the way he works, had a good spring training, and the Cardinals are going to have to prove they can hit the new Charlie Morton. Low struck out two at the top of the first. And this is Lyle Overbay, the cleanup man this year for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He spent the last four seasons with Toronto at 243 a year ago. The American League East with 20 home runs and 67 RBIs. It's a very young Pirate team. They average 27 years of age, and they always sprinkle in a few veteran guys in the midst of that lineup to try to provide some leadership, and that's really what they're looking for with Overbay. Rick, 1992 was their last winning season. Mm. They lost 105 games a year ago. That was their worst showing since 1952. Just imagine the frustration of being a Pirate fan. We were talking even before the game when they had those great teams led by Bonilla and Bonds and Van Slyke, Drabeck, Lavalier. Just misses on the inside corner. They still really weren't drawing all that well, which is a bit surprising because Pittsburgh is a good sports town. It's a good sports town, but it's more a hockey town and a football town than it is a baseball town. This is slicing into left center field. Over to get it, Alan Craig for the first out. Foxmo will give us a look at Kyle Loesch's delivery to the plate. Pretty standard delivery from Loesch. Very little head movement, eye on the target. Then you have to clear the front side, finish, and finish high with that back leg. He really has kind of pretty normal mechanics, I would say. The key for him, again, is spotting his pitches, and so far he's doing just that. You see him throwing to both sides of the plate. That's where Yachty's setting up right now, and that pitch hits that spot, the outside corner. How about the late movement on that pitch, too? If it's late movement to the spot that you've selected, 99 times out of 100, it's going to work. Pretty amazingly, uh, Kyle Loesch has a 1-2-3 first inning. First time he's done that since August 28th span of seven starts so to kind of add on to the frustration of being injured was always playing catch up. You always feel like you're not getting breaks when that happens. Exactly. Your arm hurts then you don't get a break and a blue pit and then you just get frustrated and when you're dealing with the frustration of an injury and then things just unravel around you very difficult to keep your mind straight and keep your composure on the mound and, and Loesch has had some moments like that and boy he's a much better pitcher when things are going well changing speeds that pitch at 80 miles an hour and already three strikeouts here in the first two innings for Kyle Loesch we saw quality change up from Garcia yesterday and can't get much better than that one 80 miles an hour on the corner sinking the last minute and he fooled Alvarez who has shown himself to be a pretty good hitter in his own right and there's Jaime Garcia on the left and Kyle McClellan will live out a childhood dream tomorrow, making a start for his favorite team growing up, the St. Louis Cardinals. It was fun to watch him hit with the starters before batting practice today. All the starters go out and they become this unit. You know, he's got another whole core that he's joined. You know, he's out there with those relievers telling stories for two years. Now he's got to be with the starters and figure out what that routine is like. And he and Jaime played together in the minor leagues. They know each other. Of course, he has great respect for Wainwright and Carpenter, and he'll fit right in. One ball, one strike. This is inside to Ryan Doman. Hitting 143, no home runs, no RBIs. Garcia yesterday, four batters over the minimum. Mm. Just over 100 pitches. A start that the Cardinals desperately needed. You don't want to start the year 0-3. That's obvious, but they also needed to have a a very solid outing after a shaky spring training with Jaime Garcia. It was more than shaky, Dan. I saw a game where he gave up the 14 hits in Port St. Lucie, and, and all the outs he got were not good pitches either. A lot of line drives. Kyle Lowe's has struck out four of the first six. Lance Berkman, the switch hitter, coming up first when we come back.
Sanders, instead of trying to throw the ball across his body, he'll try to make sure he's got that extra sink to the right side of the plate. And so maybe that's part of his transition to being a sinker baller. He's going to that side of the plate, not thinking about throwing that nasty fastball, just a little sinking fastball to get ground balls. That's what he got in the first inning, three harmless ground balls to the left side. Last pitch, a breaking ball. He kept that up and got away with it. No balls and two strikes with two outs and nobody on. From the camera of Tony West. The 0 2 jammed him. That's a fair ball. Overbay will step on the bag. And Molina is shaking his hands on a cold night here in St. Louis after two. Redbirds on top, 1 0. Oh, here's my favorite thing Jim Hayes is with us. Oh, boy. Hey guys, Jim's here. <laughs> I'm just playing the part. I'm just playing the part. second and after he scored he gave a piece of advice to his teammates watch out he likes to pitch inside and not only does he tell the on deck hitters he tells anybody who will listen that Morton's going to throw the ball inside and what does he do to Yadier Molina busts him inside ouch on a cold day jamming Yadier Molina one hand comes off the bat the bat breaks and Lance Berkman not only scoring but also coaching Along with Rick Horton, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and joining us for the first time in this 2011 campaign, unless you did it yesterday. Did I, you do it yesterday? I did not. Okay, no. good. That's the voice of Jim Hayes. Welcome Hi. back, sir. Hi, guys. Good if to have knows, you back. If anyone knows Morton, Berkman should. I don't know if you guys referenced five or six with a couple of homers. I mentioned that to Berkman before the game, and he said, I had no idea I had good numbers against him, but I think... He might have just been putting on a front. He had to have been. <laughs> Guys don't forget their home runs, especially. Garrett Jones to the right side and off the glove of Schumacher. And that's a base hit to start things here in the third and the first hit and first base runner for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Good effort by Schumacher. I think he goes to his left better than he does to his right and almost came up with that ball. Jones. Runs decently. Might have been a tough play anyway. It brings in the eighth place hitter, Ronnie Cedeno, who's been with the Chicago Cubs, Seattle Mariners, and now the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the pitcher is on deck. Pujols holding it first, and the first pitch to Cedeno is taken for a ball. Jim, you had live on the pregame show exclusively. Matt Holliday didn't really want to talk so much about himself and his injury, but uh, he was... Very fond of your jacket, and because of that, he said, I'll be happy to visit with you. <laughs> you liked your jacket, huh? Well, we have new beige jackets at Fox Sports Midwest, and they apparently tickled his fancy. <laughs> I but, think he, uh, like, he likes you, Jim. Come on. Who doesn't? Yeah, good point. You know, but uh, he had his appendix out Friday, and he said it didn't come out of the blue for him because he had been having stomach pain for about a week, and... He knew Friday was the off day, so he thought he'd have it looked at, and the doctor said, yeah, you're going to have surgery at your appendix. 
This could be two right here. Terrio takes it himself. Double play. Six three on the double plays. Terrio was playing towards the bag anyway. Taylor made the ball hit hard enough, so you know you're going to have no trouble taking this one yourself. Terrio makes it look easy and perfect pitch from Loesch. In listening to your interview with Matt Holliday, and this is Charlie Morton, the pitcher. He mentioned that he went to the medical staff and to Tony and the rest of the front office and said, "Hold off on putting me on the disabled list. I think I might be back sooner than maybe others think." He had heard that uh, the recovery time for Nepenix might not be as long as it would be putting him on the 15 day DL. So he asked them on his own to hold off. The fly ball into shallow right. Berkman on the run. Jim Hayes back for the bottom of the third. That's going to make you want to stick around. Oh boy. Schumacher, Lowe, Shinterio coming up. Can't wait. Mizzou, FoxSportsMidwest.com. Skip Schumacher leads it off, followed by Kyle Loesch and Ryan Terrio, along with Rick Horton and Jim Hayes. I'm Dan McLaughlin, and the Cardinals have a 1-0 lead. One hit aside and a 1-0 lead as we move to the bottom of the third. Well, Kyle Loesch, Jim, as we've seen so far, three innings has been very effective, and he has struck out four already. I talked to him before the game. You know, some starting pitchers just want to be left alone. Kyle just wants to treat it as another as another start. And I said this start though, the first of the season for you, you're healthy now. Is this just another start? And he said that's the way he has to look at it. A little bit like Jeff Supon then. He's not afraid to chat with you before the game on a on a start day. Most pitchers run away and when they see anybody they want to be really by themselves and not talk to any reporters. It, it depends sure. pitcher to pitcher but Kyle Lowe's just wants to treat it. That's a fair ball inside the third baseline and touched by a fan. So Schumacher will have a ground rule double. Uh oh. How old do you think this kid is? I don't know, but I think he's going to be escorted to a different seat, I'm afraid. That's kind of the rules here as Schumacher hits that ball right over the third base bag. And unfortunately, you're not allowed to touch the ball that's in play. And usually they make you go sit somewhere else. But what is he, 13? Dad's all smiles. They're going to let it go. Let it go. Why not? So Schumacher, the ground rule double. And here's Loesch. Chance to help himself here. Many times those pitchers for Tony La Russa will show bunt and swing away. And in this case, it's strike one. I thought Cal on the pregame show made a great point. And he said for Cal Loesch, 
more so than any other starter in this rotation, maybe with the exception of McClellan tomorrow, getting the first three outs and coming away out of that first inning unscathed is huge for him. Just, just kind of wiping last year in that slate clean and starting new. I would say more so than McClellan. I think the pressure really in the Cardinal staff is as much on Loesch and Westbrook to replace Wainwright as it is for McClellan. Easy play at third, and Schumacher is out. One away here in the third, and Loesch is the runner at first. His bunt is just too hard. And we've got a nice close-up view of that play at third on our Foxmo. Any doubt that he's out? He's out. Ricky, seeing that bunt, is that something you say when Skip comes to the dugout, you've got to read that better, or is that just he's off and running on the secondary lead, and once it's down, you put your head down, and you're off to third? Yeah, I think at that point, it's really difficult on a sacrifice bunt not to at least try it. Make him make a play, and, you know, I, I could see that going a couple different ways because that was bunted so hard, but you're almost thinking contact, like you are when you're leading off third base on an infield ground ball. It's go on contact. It's pretty much the same deal in a bunt situation as long as the ball isn't bunted up in the air. If it's in the air, you know you've got to freeze and head back to the back. This is Ryan Terrio grounded out to short his first time up. 0 for 1. And he's trying to bunt his way on, but was still in the box, so that's a foul ball. Such a, such a little thing, Dan, but you also end up with the pitcher running the bases on that situation. And, you know, no, it's not a hot day, and Kyle Loesch is in extraordinary shape. He's a big league player, but you'd rather have him be successful in the bunt, go sit down and think about what he's going to do the next sure. time he goes out. Kyle Loesch would take exception to that because he believes he's a superior athlete. Good golfer. Believes he's quite dangerous as a hitter as well. Every pitcher I'd thinks they're quite dangerous. They do. I'd still rather see him sitting Every. on the bench and, and Schumacher at third, though. <laughs> Here's and the think 0 2 too. Terrio is swinging a miss, and he strikes out as Morton blew it right by him at 95 miles an hour. That's his first strikeout of the evening. And you can follow the Cardinals with the MLB.com at Bat 11 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or BlackBerry. Get live audio, pitch by pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at Bat to 31826 or visit cardinals.com for details. I guess Kyle Loesch would tell you the same thing, but he says for him, it's not really a question of confidence, it's health, and he's healthy now, and when he's healthy, he's able to consistently repeat his delivery, and he says that's what it's all about for him. There's that fastball up in the eyes, 95 miles an hour, you can't catch up to that one. Jim, you talked about McClellan and I mentioned how it's a, a dream of his to make a start. It's one thing and I'll never forget it. His major league debut it was against the Colorado Rockies and he wound up getting a really big strikeout on opening day three years ago. But now he is going to make his first ever start in the big leagues. And he's been through everything as a reliever. He says for the first time in a while he's anxious about it. A little nervous. He knows for the first time what the situation is when he comes in there. Nobody on. Nobody out which is a change for him. He said the toughest thing to do is manage the downtime. Little chopper hit to second, stepping on the bag, Neil Walker. The top of the lineup coming up for the Buckos. Jim, we'll see you on the post game.
six is a serious number again when the Cardinals score six. Get 25 cent drinks the next day, all day, at On the Run at Mobile. That's any 20 ounce coffee, fountain, or frozen drink for just a quarter. And we're serious. On the Run at Mobile. Top of the lineup for Loesch to deal with. Tabata, Walker, and McCutcheon. Clint Hurdle made a very interesting point when he was asked why not Andrew McCutcheon back in his customary spot of the last couple of years of being a leadoff man. And in his opinion, most young hitters cannot adapt to the major league curveball. It takes them time. And in his mind, Tabata is a guy that he says not only can hit a curveball, but he recognizes that curveball. And when it's in the zone, a lot of times it goes out of the zone. So we're using a guy in this spot that can take pitches, go deeper into a count, and that's why we want him as a leadoff man. And that's a classic skill of a leadoff hitter, to be able to look for an off-speed pitch, be patient, not just jump on the first fastball that you see. The 2-1 is tapped foul. Two balls and two strikes. Longest active hitting streaks against the Cardinals. Ramirez, LaRoche. I'm not surprised by that one, by the way. Ramirez just kills the Cardinals. Victorino, Pence, and then two Pirates on there. Remember what the Pirates did at the end of last season against the Cardinals? Mm. Redbirds yes, dominated I do. <laughs> Pittsburgh, and then the Pirates played much better baseball towards the end of the season against St. Louis. And essentially that one road trip, which included a stop in Pittsburgh, not the Cardinals out of contention. Tabata, Walker, McCutcheon, good young talent on this team. Just not sure whether it's good enough to get them out of the position they've been in over the last few years. Really, the difference has been they haven't had enough pitching. Their pitching really has started off very, very well. Ray Searge is the pitching coach here, former teammate, former Cardinal minor leaguer, actually. 3-2, Terrio to his left. Settles and throws and makes a good play. So you have to go back to 1992, the last time that the Pittsburgh Pirates were winning team. So 18 years now, most years without a winning season, even a team like the Kansas City Royals, which they struggled and continue to struggle under Tony Pena. They got off to a remarkable start a few years ago and finished above 500. But the Pirates are there 18 years. That's hit into right and drops in front of Berkman. Keeps it in front. Walker on his way to second base and slides in safely. Well, I know what Berkman was trying to do right there is keep the ball in front of him, but the ball gets away from him. It's going to be an error on Lance Berkman, his first of the year, as it bounces off to his right and alert base running by Neil Walker, who does run well. Single E9. There's so much scouting done in Major League Baseball now with video, the internet, and simply just talking to other teams. And you wonder how many times will we see this summer teams go after Berkman and run on him? Well, I think teams were running on Colby Rasmus last year, even though he has probably as strong an arm as any center fielder you're going to see in the National League. But his accuracy was not very good last year, though it got better and he's worked at it. But you think about the Cardinals outfield, you really don't think about strong armed weapons in the outfield. And so we may see that quite a bit. How and concerned are you with this defense overall? Well, it's certainly not going to be the strong point of this club. And the key is to not make many mental mistakes. You're going to make a few physical mistakes. It's just going to happen. And make the routine play. I think that's really the key is don't miss the routine play. David Freeze, when the Cardinals did not have him at third base last year, there were a number of routine plays that his replacements just bobbled or kicked around, and you saw how that led to the Cardinals go on a, going on a losing streak without Freeze's defense. It's a count of one ball and two strikes on McCutcheon. Last year, his first full season in the big leagues, he hit 286. Runner at second base, and a ground ball hit to the left side. Freeze quickly to first. McCutcheon hustling down the line. They get him by a step. And staying put at second base, Neil Walker. Routine play. 
you, know, you love it when your defense makes the great play. You think of even Brendan Ryan last year occasionally making just an outstanding, incredible play and some Cardinal defenders of the, of the past, Ozzie Smith, the most notable one. And you, and you appreciate when a player is able to do that, but just make the routine play. That's 90% of what you need out of your defense. Over Bay back in the National League. Broke through with Arizona in 2001. But it was off to Milwaukee. He can play third base. He can play the outfield. And for the Pirates this year, with Garrett Jones and Wright, Overbay is expected to play first. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Lyle Overbay. That good sinking action and a changeup that he was using very effectively in spring training. So far, location very good, as well as the changing of speeds. Velocity, location, change of speed. Those are the three things the pitcher needs. We see a runner at second and two outs, and this is what separates good pitchers from great pitchers at times. Can they get out of an inning unscathed? And at times, Loesch was unable to do that. Well, we see a lot of things going on. Not only Loesch trying to figure out how to get out of this inning, but the shortstop Terrio, we noticed closing in on Neil Walker at second base. We talked about the outfield arms. It may be something that we see more of this year. The middle infielders pinching in more to make sure those are short leads in case there is a base hit and really maybe to overcome some of the outfield arm deficiencies. And time is called. Home plate umpires Dana DeMuth. He's the crew chief. Kerwin Danley at first. Paul Neward at second. And Doug Eddings over at third. The 2 1 pitch to Overbay. Ground ball, this should do it. Schumacher to his right, and he makes the play. A low throw to Pools. Albert, don't go anywhere. He's due up first when we come back on Fox Sports Midwest. Back in St. Louis in Bush Stadium with the Cardinals leading one to nothing as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Our AT&T trivia question. What team did Clint Hurdle hit his final home run for? The AT&T trivia question concerning the skipper of the Pirates. who was the Cardinals September of 1986. It's the great golfer. Very good golfer. Is that Rick Roden or Rick Rushell? They're Rushel. both good. They're both good golfers. Rick, Ru Rick Roden's the better one. Yes. Pools taps it slowly towards third. Alvarez, low throw, and Albert is retired. He's 0 for 2. Clint Hurdle, by the way, was a Cardinal in 1986 when the Mets won, and he was a Met in 85 and 87 when the Cardinals won. Right. So he had the wrong team three years in a row. Albert just hitting the top of that baseball, pitched down in the zone, good location 
for Morton, and he's done a good job, Dan, of keeping the ball in the infield here. He's not had good success against the Cardinals. We've mentioned that, but he doesn't seem to be rattled by that. Seems to be in command. This Pirates staff, Team ERA under three through, yeah, clearly just three games, but still good showing early on. Here's Berkman who walked his first time up, loses the bat, and it's into the seats. There is protective netting that you see that you just saw there on that screen after Juan Encarnacion was hit on a foul ball by Aaron Miles on the face and then the subsequent injury. About halfway through, it's very tough to see on your screen, but there is netting that was brought up. And at one point, that was never there until that foul ball that hit Encarnacion and that bat went over that and into the seats. Mm. Scary. And you have to wonder from a player's perspective, and now a nice round of applause. The young man has the bat, Dan, yeah. and it looks like he got hit somewhat. The dad's next to him. He, no one seems to be panicking right now, so he's just a little bit shaken up. From That's a player's perspective, uh, uh, Rick, you have to wonder about just what goes through uh, the mind uh, of a player right now, like Lance Berkman dealing with uh, this at bat, and in the back of his mind, wondering what, what's going on in the seats, because well, he is not look back there just yet. Cardinals saw that happen in spring training in a game that Kyle Loesch was pitching when Brian McCann hit a line drive and hit one of his coaches in the eye he subsequently fell and was rushed to the hospital ended up losing that eye at the end of the emergency treatment that was given to him Luis Salazar and, and McCann said the, after that he just he could not bring himself to swing at the, at the next pitch he was just really I having a hard time focusing on that at bat. There was even talk of canceling the game, right? Both sides thought about doing that. And Berkman draws another walk, and that's an aspect of his game that comes to St. Louis on base percentage in drawing walks. Pirates not a good team ERA last year, and they have had some great improvement with their starters. 2010 through 2011, of course, is just a few games in, but 5-2-8 ERA as a club last year and just 2-8-9, and that's the starters only through 2011, first few games. Good improvement, and you expect them to be better. They do have some good young arms. They have a great arm in the bullpen, and Hanrahan, who has pitched very well against the Cardinals, he's now their closer. And we've seen him strike out the side against the Cardinals a couple of different times. This is Alan Craig single to right on a hit and run after Berkman had walked back in the second inning. Outfield is straight away for Alan Craig. Talked about the question earlier about Lance Berkman and what to expect with him in terms of numbers. I think the Cardinals bullpen as this game unfolds uh, will get a little bit more of an indication today of what we have in our bullpen. That, that too is a question mark for the Cardinals who will be the Kyle McClellan replacement in inning seven and eight. Will Mott and Boggs get better or get worse? Will Franklin be able to handle the ninth inning again? A lot of question marks in that bullpen. And looking at the offense right now, maybe a blessing in disguise concerning the uh, injury to Matt Holliday is the fact that Alan Craig gets to play every yes. day. Oh. And that's where he struggled a year ago trying to come off the bench. With those spot starts, spot ABs. Well, I, I've been in his camp for a long time. I've just seen the numbers that he put up in the big leagues, and I just like his approach. I like his demeanor. You see how hard he hits the ball. He hits the ball very well the other way, much like David Freeze you were talking about earlier, and of course Albert. And he's really adjusting, Dan, to hit that pitch on the inside part of the plate. He's made some adjustments so he can handle that good fastball in there. And that's where they're pitching him. The way he holds his hands, he's got a little bit of a wrap of the bat, the bat head a little bit towards the pitcher. His hands are low, and it, and it makes for a bit of a longer swing to handle that pitch on the inside half. But I think the ability is there, I, I, and I do think it's a great opportunity for him to show he's capable of playing every day at this level. 
primarily an outfielder, but he can also play third base. And this is what we're talking about here the way that he holds the bat. Notice the bat head facing towards the pitcher. And it's back to back walks. Saturday, April 23rd, all fans ages 16 and older receive a bronze statue featuring Cardinals Hall of Famer Red Shandies, courtesy of Edward Jones. It's the fourth in a series of nine. Don't miss it. The tickets call 345 9500. That's the weekend against the uh, Cincinnati Reds. And that Friday night is fireworks night. Then you have the Red Shandies giveaway. And the first ever Stan the Man bobblehead all that weekend against Cincinnati. And there's the Hall of Famer. It's his real head. You watch him, you know, hop off the truck on opening day. And it's like, you know, he's 35 years old. He seemed a lot younger than he was even five years ago. And he's just in great spirits. He was around the batting cage the last couple of days. Red chain dates and just, you know, he loves the game of baseball. And, and he's not he's not a guy that's just going to... Uh, Never going to be negative about anything. He's a very positive man and just a class act. He's a really a, a, the perfect representative, I would say, for the Cardinal organization. David Freeze, one nothing lead here in the fourth, and he looks at a pitch inside. Still has the movement, but he's not hitting that inside corner right now. The Cardinals are laying off that pitch. Lance Berkman said he's going to try to pitch you in. Be careful with that. Now they're taking that pitch. And it's running off the plate, and they're being called for ball. One ball, one strike. Wisely taking strike one. David Fries came up with runners at first and third. And nobody out back in the second inning. Bounced into a double play, 5-4-3. And that scored the first and only run of this game. Trying to go inside again. Missed in. Two balls, one strike. Infielders pinched up the middle, hoping for a double play. Sinker ball pitcher trying to get that ball running down and in on the right-hander. So far, Freeze is not biting. That one caught Domit two and two. That could very well be what Lance Berkman was trying to communicate to the rest of the team is that he was going to try to get you on the inside half and lay off that pitch. So he's got to make him come down the middle of the plate, which he did on that pitch to freeze, took a rip at it. And he may very well have been telling players to leave that pitch alone. Berkman with two walks on the day has always been a good on base percentage guy. I don't mean a good I don't mean good at it. Berkman's been great at it, getting on base and a foul tip. So. Freeze took his time getting back in the batter's box to allow Doma to catch his breath. And it's two balls, two strikes. Little bouncer up the middle from his knees. An outstanding play by Neil Walker to take a hit away in an RBI from David Freeze. Only play was to go to first. Both Cedeno and Walker were there, so nobody at the bag in second. His only play was to... Uh, go across the diamond to first base. And we've seen two plays with David Freeze that if he's really running 100% and not concerned about his ankle, and I don't think the concern is an ongoing one that he's really too worried about, but you still are going to be just a little bit tentative. The double play that he hit into at the second inning, he was thrown out by his step and not able to beat out that hit there. And there'll be a time where I think David's going to be able to beat that throw to first base, and unfortunately that time is not now. Molina a year ago struck out once every 12 plate appearances. And we saw and have seen that he's been excellent in this spot. Two outs, runners in scoring position, and he has second and third right here with a 1 0 St. Louis lead. A lot of talk about his offense being down last year, Dan, but he had a career high in RBIs. Hit 262. 62 RBIs and six home runs and falls behind no balls and two strikes. Remember Molina, they got in his kitchen the previous at bat and he grounded out weekly to first. You do not want him in your kitchen when it's cold. I'm not sure if that's worse, Dan, or hit the ball off the end of the bat. I, I, maybe that's even worse on a cold, cold night, and it certainly is that. Contrast to yesterday's game where temperatures were in the upper 70s and may have hit 80. 
Oh, it was in the 80s for sure. And some reports even said 90. Wow. No balls and two strikes. They want to make sure they're on the same page here. Now they've been going inside, inside, inside. Sometimes you get too cute. You leave one over the middle of the plate here. Well, the problem with him throwing the ball over the middle of the plate is this ball is a lot straighter there. When he throws that sinker on the inside part, he hasn't shown me that he can sink the ball to the outside corner yet. The 0 2. Sooner or later, he's going to have to be able to establish a fastball on the outer half where the Cardinals are going to start giving him the outer half of the plate. Say, you know what? You throw it out there. I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm going to look in on every pitch, and you better be careful when you throw every pitch inside. Sooner or later, somebody's going to catch up to him. It's a great point. Mark McGuire talks about location for a hitter. You always hear it with a pitcher. He says, which half of the plate suits them? He mentioned two things, short approach mm -hmm. and location, meaning which half of the plate suits that hitter. And Morton has not had success here against Molina. Four for six is Yachty. We always think about a guess hitter, and we always think, Dan, that that means what pitch is the pitcher going to throw. But the hitter often guesses location, either in or away. And sometimes we wonder when a player just takes a pitch and can't pull the trigger, he's probably not looking for that pitch on that side of the plate. He can't catch up to it. Nothing into the count. Big gap in the left center field. Little floater down the right field line and out of play. He's having a difficult time getting that breaking pitch even away. He's leaving them on the inside half. And that pitch was not a good pitch for Morton at all. It was just kind of a spinner that hung on the inside half of the plate. It almost was such a such a poor location that Molina couldn't handle it. 21 of the 51 and this bottom of the fourth inning alone. Time called by Molina. Oh two. And again fought off by Molina. I'm not sure you agree with this Rick but it looked like. Prior to that last pitch, Molina had opened up his stance ever so slightly, and they've been pounding him inside. Yeah, I think he's looking in right now, and the thing with Morton so far is when he gets the pitch on the inside part of the plate, it's so nasty that it's hard to hit it anyway. But you're looking to maybe have him make a mistake on the inner half, not off the plate in, but on the inner half, and Molina may have opened up just a bit to be able to handle that pitch. 0-2, and that time outside and in the dirt. Catcher gives signs. He does not have to give location on breaking pitches, but if he's going to give a fastball, he will have to give a location along with it. So one may be a fastball in, maybe one with a point is a fastball away. And again, the fastball away would be an equalizer pitch for Morton if he could come up with one. Sinking fastball in the outside corner, he strikes out Molina. And he pulls it foul on an inside pitch. You know, people will say sometimes, well, I don't like baseball because it's too slow. This, to me, is the beauty of the game right here. The game within the game. Morton trying to get Yadier Molina inside, outside. What pitch do you go with? You've got a guy that doesn't strike out very often. And you've got a pitcher on the other side, Loesch, that looks like he may not give up any runs. So this is a critical point in this game. And these are the best players in the world doing this, too. That's what's the other thing is he's throwing that ball from 60 feet away to that spot almost every single time too and if for anybody that stood 60 feet away not that easy to do and Domit is saying wait a minute guys this is game four and you're beating me up <laughs> nor is it easy for the hitter to literally see the ball first of all you've got to be able to see it one thing about major league players their vision is outstanding most players have better than average vision and they have incredible depth perception and that's part of what makes them elite at the hand-eye coordination part of this game. There is a lot going on right now. One, two, a little bouncer hits to the left side. Cut off by Alvarez, takes his time and makes the play. 
Molina's over two. The Cardinals have stranded three. Morton wins that battle. Pedro Alvarez do it first when we come back. both the Blues game against the Avalanche and the Cardinals Pirates game and you'll find the Blues game on Fox Sports Midwest secondary channel all you have to do is go to FoxSportsMidwest.com to find channel listings Kyle Loesch very effective so far he's allowed a pair of base hits and the Cardinals with a one run lead as we move to the top of the fifth tomorrow night Kyle McClellan against James McDonald and then on Wednesday afternoon, day baseball, Chris Carpenter and Kevin Correa. Here's Pedro Alvarez, and the first pitch is in there for a strike. In contrast to Morton, Loesch has established here tonight that he can throw pitches to both sides of the plate effectively. And he, like his counterpart, working from the first base side of the rubber. Perfect pitch there to that inside pitch to a left-hander. Here's a good look at what you just said. Ball with the foot on the first base side. And there's that pitch on the inside corner again. It's a perfect location. With Wainwright out, it is imperative more than ever that Loesch return to form. Yeah, and we, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but th there's so much talk about Loesch or about McClellan and the pressure on him. And, you know, when you're the fifth starter, you're the fifth starter and I'm not saying that doesn't matter and McClellan may very well be better than the fifth starter before it's over but the real pressure to me is on Jake Westbrook and Kyle Loach. I think Chris Carpenter is going to be who he is. Westbrook had a rough outing in game two. Uncharacteristic control issues. I still find it amazing that Adam Wainwright has chosen to stay with the team all year. That is very unusual. I, I understand it's unusual, but why not? Well, I, I can give you a thousand reasons why not if it's not Adam Wainwright. Most managers tolerate starting pitchers to begin with in the dugout because they're guys that have no stress. They don't have to pitch. They got hitters playing the game, and these pitchers are just bothering. Great play by Pujols. And so uh, there are many times where I've been on teams where the managers say, well, you can just get the pitchers out of here. Ha send them to the bullpen because what they do is they're just so relaxed while players are feeling the tension of a game that can be distracting. And so if you don't have a job to do and you're in with a bunch of people who are focused on what they're supposed to be doing, you can be a distraction to them. But Wainwright is not that kind of guy. He's, he's selfless. He's a good teammate. He'll understand what I'm talking about here and not become a negative. And if he thought he would, he wouldn't do it. Well, you have a guy going into the season, potentially could have been a, another Cy Young Award season for Adam Wainwright, or at least been in that conversation. And he understands the league. So when you have a guy like Garcia, 
or Westbrook who comes over from the American League and still learning this league. That's an invaluable resource there. Two balls and one strike. Domit struck out his first time up. And Kyle Loesch has struck out for tonight. Three and one. Domit taps it to the right side. Who holds to Kyle Loesch for the second out. Well, if you're just joining us, let's take a look at some of the key plays that we've seen already in this ball game tonight. A hit and run with Alan Craig. Berkman avoiding the baseball. And he winds up at third base. He has scored the only run of our ball game tonight. Towards Meanwhile, second. this play. Kyle Loesch getting out of an inning where the runner aboard made some good pitches. That was a bounce out in the fourth inning with a runner at second base. And then the play by Albert to lead off the fifth inning. Perhaps saving a double. Loesch has been... Very good, getting a lot of ground balls, and there's another one. Charged by Schumacher. That's not an easy play right there at all. Tough play. Makes it on the run. One, two, three, go the Pirates. Schumacher leads it off when we come back. Fifth inning with some defensive help. First by Albert Pujols, a little 3-1 for the first out. Then a little 3-1 again to take care of the second. And then a nice play by Schumacher. Off-balance throw, charging hard. Three ground ball outs. Only two balls have reached the outfield. Much like Jaime Garcia's game here yesterday. Only two outfield outs in nine innings against Garcia yesterday. Schumacher with a double first time up I saw that play with him charging he's told me the two toughest plays in his transition to second base was the one we just saw there and also potential double plays to his left so he gloves it going towards the first base line and he doesn't know if he should spin and go to second or just transfer his hips and open them up and throw to second he said those are very tough to judge which way to to go with it on those double plays but that was not an easy play even though you look at it it's a slow roller when you're charging like that spin on the ball not easy second baseman has to be a very agile fielder for a lot of reasons all the double play combinations do you come to the infield part of the bag Do you go to the outfield part Jose Okendo has done a great job of teaching infield play to skip Schumacher and you know he's not been the, a gold glove defender clearly but he works hard at it and I think he's done a nice job. This date in Cardinals history, April 4th, 1998. 
McGuire ties Willie Mays with a home run in his first four games to start the season. Our Schnooks, this date in Cardinals history. On his way to historic number 70. You sure you want to keep saying all that stuff about Wainwright? He's well, pretty chatty in there. <laughs> Well, if he goes over a line, I think the manager might have something to say about it. Loach not happy with that location. Depends on who you're joking with. Okay, so who can he joke and with? Well, guy's not playing. Wouldn't you love to see him just go up to Tony and start joking like that? Uh, I'm I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. And yep. then Adam yep. would not be with us let, anymore. Let, let's circle him. There's one you don't joke with. <laughs> to put him on that list. Loesch still not happy about that inside pitch. And Domit saying, why would we be throwing at you? Well, I'm sure in the back of um, Kyle Loesch's mind, he's saying, all right, I'm finally healthy. And remember, when he was injured, it was when he was cruising in a game against Kansas City a couple of years ago and then was hit by a pitch on the forearm. That's the last thing he needs. Certainly a little sensitive about those pitches on the inside half. You can't blame him. No. Spoils that pitch to stay two and two. Remember these two teams had bad blood with Lloyd McClendon, Dave Duncan. Dave Duncan. Gerald Perry. Perry was in on that, former Cardinal. And Loesch lines it out to left, but the catch is made. Tabata is there. Two away, and it brings in Ryan Terrio. Here's a look at Nick Punto. He's been telling folks he expects to be back earlier than what most expected. Well, I keep saying I can't wait to see him, and I still haven't seen him yet. But everybody that has seen him play on a regular basis talks about how valuable a player he is, how scrappy he is, and how good a hitter he is. And he's just really a perfect element of team baseball. And, you know, players like that, Dan, you know, you'd say, what's the difference between a team player and somebody who's just really talented? I'm not sure I can put my finger on what that is, but some guys are perfect glue players that you just know that wherever you put them they're going to get the job done they're not going to be a problem they're going to be a plus maybe they're not flashy but they just know how to get the job done and everything I've heard about Nick Punto he's that kind of player see Pujols just studying there the mannerisms here of Charlie Morton one ball one strike Ontario who is 0 for 2 he is struck out and grounded out to short Cardinal fans might Put David Eckstein in that category. No range as a shortstop. No arm as a shortstop. No power. No speed. But you love having him on your team, and he's a World Series MVP. I'm surprised he does not have a job, and he does not. That's right. Somebody needs some glue. Two and two. We get word today that Jeff Supon signed a minor league deal with the Kansas City Royals a team that he spent a number of years with in the American League and he was one of the last cuts of the world champion San Francisco Giants mentioned the Royals were off to a very good start 2 2 Terrio takes it low and on the bad start ledger would be the Milwaukee Brewers who lost again today to the Atlanta Braves they've now lost their first four ball games and Braves are going to be a tough team to play that game in Milwaukee. Terrio fights it off for a base hit into right. His first hit of the ball game, he's one for three. Pitch on the inner half. Morton's been living on that location. Inside out swing for Terrio. Ends up with his first hit of the night. Colby Rasmus is grounded out to short and grounded to second, 0 for 2. Albert Pujols waits on deck. 
Colby trying to extend the inning. Now here's where not being able to throw the ball. To the inside half of a left hander or outside for a right hander could be a problem if Colby Rasmus. And he probably should do this just give him that inside half look for something a way that he can drive. You just make Colby Rasmus a 350 hitter if he doesn't have to worry about the inside fastball. We always think about the scenarios with the man on deck. If Rasmus would double and yet second and third one run game this early in the season midway through the game. Would you walk pools. Yes I would. Not if Matt Holiday was in the lineup I wouldn't. Tonight it's Berkman hitting behind Albert. That's right down the middle for a strike one ball one strike. How have you seen teams pitching Albert so far. And tonight for people that have just joined us he's over two. Seems like they're pounding him inside. Trying to jam him. And that's the book on how you pitch most guys anyway is hard stuff in soft stuff away but it seems like the hard stuff in has really been. What the National League pitchers have shown so far and it's again just through a few games but San Diego almost hit him a couple times trying to get in on the hands of pool holes. Managers will always tell you they're a step or two ahead or at least they'd like to be you have to think about those kind of scenarios right now in this game. With a guy like pool holes on deck if he has a chance to do damage. Runner goes and Terrio has his stolen base. First Cardinal stolen base of the season. They were 0 for 2 going into that attempt. Ryan Domit, last among catchers in all of baseball last year in throwing out runners. I expect the Cardinals will run anytime they get a chance against him in this series. He can hit, he just does not have a very good arm. Terrio had 20 steals last year. 16 with the Cubs and 4 and 54 games with the Dodgers. And you mentioned Pujols, Dan. I guarantee you that Clint Hurdle knows who's hitting next. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee Everybody it. in the building does. That's right. Well, if you're Colby Rasmus, you got to figure you're going to get a pitch to hit right here. Three and one the count. Albert on deck. Colby would love to launch number one right here. The 3 1 pitch. Missed on the outside corner. That's four walks issued by Morton. His pitch count is at 77. And let's see if Albert can do some damage here. I suspect Albert will cheat even more than we saw Yachty do on the inside half. Maybe open up a bit, but also stand off the plate a bit more. Two adjustments a hitter can make. The third one just literally look for the ball in there. Be ready to turn quickly. And there he is. looks at a strike. Guerrero, Helton, Jeter, Pujols. And Guerrero again, the highest career average against an opponent, active players. 374. Minimum 300 at bats. A lot of home runs in that mix, too. A lot of it done at PNC. Breaks his bat. It's a fair ball. Low throw. And taken there by Overbay. Again, he gets in on Albert Pools, who's over three tonight.
Game two tomorrow night with the Buckos at 6.30 with the pregame show. McDonald and McClellan as Kyle makes his Major League starting debut tomorrow night. Here's Ronnie Cedeno, and he'll take a strike, and we're underway here in the sixth. one nothing St. Louis. That run was scored back in the second inning. Breaking ball and a base hit into right for Ronnie Cedeno. So the eighth place hitter reaches with a leadoff base hit into right. And that extends his, his hitting streak against the Cardinals. Twelve, right? Twelve, I believe. He's had some big hits against the Cardinals in the last couple of years. Just takes this ball the other way. A little bit off balance, but his hands were back enough to drive the ball in that hole between first and second. Here's the pitcher, Morton. Bunting. And it's perfect. Loesch only plays to Schumacher covering the bag at first. And Cedeno represents the tying run in scoring position. Part of the communication that goes on on a bunt, the pitcher as he comes in to field the ball cannot see the jump that the runner got. So let's listen to Yadier Molina giving instructions to his pitcher, Kyle Loesch. Screaming one, 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 one. That play, you could see him going to cover third. Everybody's in motion on that play, too. Almost developed the vernacular over time what players will do to give direction while the ball is in play. They'll say one, two, three, because it's easier to distinguish a one, two, three. It's obvious. If you say first base, second base, all you're going to hear is base. When you teach young players to play the outfield, you don't teach them to say, I got it. Because if they say, I got it, somebody might hear, you got it. I got it, you got it. All I heard was got it. And the ball drops. You say, you, 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 or me, me, me. And those things become really important when you're trying to communicate, especially when you're in a big league game with a lot of fans yelling. Two balls and one strike. Zabada was picked up from the Yankees along with Jeff Karstens and Ross Ohlendorf. And Daniel McCutcheon, that was a deal that sent Xavier Nady and DeMarso Marte, lefty, hard throwing lefty, to the Yankees. It's back in 2008. But Marte had a great future. He was a nasty left hander. Bounced around to a couple of different clubs. I was hoping the Cardinals would get him at one point. That didn't work out. They have Pedro Feliciano and Brian Cashman, the GM of the Yankees, said that Feliciano. The way that he was used was abused by the Mets. Just said that a week ago as Feliciano has been dealing with arm issues. Speaking of abused in terms of a relief pitcher, I had a little chuckle with the Pirates pitching coach Ray Searge before the game. He came into St. Louis one year. He's pitching for the Dodgers. The only left hander in their pen came in and said, I need a rest. My arm's killing me. And I looked at his stats. He'd only pitched a third of an inning, but Lasorda had had him up two or three times every game the first 12 games of the season because he was the only left hander out there. He said I need I need to go on a DL. I've only got a third of an inning. Three and two the count. We saw last night Sunday night baseball and your former teammate Oral Hershiser is a part of that now and he returned to the mound at Dodger Stadium before the game mm -hmm. and they actually did a nice feature on the Bulldog and the 58 plus scoreless innings that he had put together wearing that Dodger blue. And you're going to bring up who lost that game that where he broke that record, aren't I, you? I'm not going to do that. Now that is a rarity here this season. Going into spring training and now a walk by Kyle Loesch. His first that he's allowed the entire year. Spring training and now. Fireworks night back at Bush Stadium, April 22nd. And We'll have various nights of, of the fireworks nights here at the ballpark, but that first one is against Cincinnati. And just visit us online at Cardinals.com April 22nd. That's a Friday night. Next day you get the Red Shandy statue and then stand the man bobblehead. So make it a weekend here. That's slicing down the left field line. Trouble. And it's a fair ball that's off the wall. This game is at least tied. And now it's 2-1 Pittsburgh. Neil Walker, whose dad 
was a member of the Cardinals back in the 70s delivers. This pitch looked like it might have been up just a bit. It was on the outside half, but this ball up about belt high and Walker takes it the other way and really playing him not to hit the ball down the left field line, really playing him straight up and no chance for Alan Craig to keep both runners from scoring and a tough break for Kyle Loach. And now it's McCutcheon. McCutcheon is 0 for 2. He's grounded out to third and struck out back in the first. Neil Walker now 2 for 3, standing at second base. He has two of the four hits by the Buckos tonight. McCutcheon jumps on the pitch out to deep left. Craig is back at the wall and it's gone. Andrew McCutcheon, his second of the season. And just like that, it's 4 1 Pittsburgh. What a difference a couple of pitches make. Loesch was on a roll. He doesn't get this pitch down either. McCutcheon looking for the ball in. Craig, a great effort just over his glove on our Fox Mo. Perfect timing, but. Ran out of real estate, and McCutcheon has changed the entire complexion of this game in a hurry. Now Overbay, who's 0 for 2, 4 1 Pittsburgh. Getting started with a single by Cedeno, sacrificed by Morton, a walk to Tabata, a double by Walker to score two, and then a two run homer by McCutcheon. One ball, one strike on Overbay, who is 0 for 2. Two swings of the bat have really quieted this crowd here at Bush Stadium. Cardinals with Berkman, Craig, and Freeze in the bottom of the sixth. Would like to get some of it back. You don't want to get all of it back right away. You don't have to get all of it back right away, but you want to get some of it back. Back to Loesch for the out. By the way, how about Jaime Garcia on the final out of the ball game yesterday? He almost threw it and airmailed it over Albert Pools. After throwing perfect location right. pitches, over 100 of them, he couldn't throw the ball to Albert. I think he was just pretty excited, wasn't he? And as a teacher of the game, and you're a guy that played a number of years in the big leagues and coached in the minor leagues with Cleveland. For young players that are out there, what are you taught? Well, you have to do the crow hop. You have to move your body towards every throw that you make as a pitcher. You can't stand flat-footed. I think he did that a little bit. You just really just want to get your feet moving towards your target, and that'll help you make a good throw. You, you really become an infielder after you catch a ground ball. So it's a different throw that you make from the rubber. And Garcia got away with that, but, you know, we're... We're picking on him because wow was he good. Yes. I mean, wow was he good. And and really surprised me in a lot of ways, Dan. And you know, I didn't worry too much about him after his spring, but you have that little doubt in your mind because he got hit so hard and really there was no physical issue on the table. He just kept hitting bats. Strikeout number five for Kyle Loesch, but the Pirates get to him here in the sixth inning. Two run double, two run homer, 4 1 lead, Pittsburgh.
brought to you by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of day. By Kia Motors. And by Steel. Are you ready for a steal? Lance Berkman has walked twice and scored a run back in the second inning. And Berkman on the first pitch fouls it back, and the Cardinals trailing for the first time tonight, 4-1. to one. Frustrating for Kyle Lowe. She was outstanding through the first five innings, makes a couple of mistakes in the sixth, and all of a sudden he's on the short end of a 4-1 to one stick. He's, I'm sure, very frustrated right now sitting in that Cardinal dugout. Lance Berkman drafted by Houston first round back in 1997. Last year traded away to the Yankees and signed a one year deal as a free agent to join the Cardinals. Five time all star most recently back in 2008. Takes a pitch a little bit low. One thing you love about Berkman is his very good eye. As his career on base percentage is 409. The one two pitch. What they tell kids in Little League walks as good as a hit. A lot of cases that's very true and. You have an on base percentage of 409. I'm going to say he's got to be in the top five or six of all active players with that number. 2 2 on a hop to second and handled there by Walker. Well, the difference for Morton all night long has been his ability to get outs on the inside part of the plate on right handers. Keeps working that inside corner. Good movement when he throws the ball in. Not everybody's happy about him coming inside. He's gotten Albert out three times on that sinking fastball right in on the hands. And the Cardinals know it's coming, Dan, but that's where he's got his good movement. Here's Alan Craig. He talked about with the way that he holds the bat and his positioning at the plate where this might be the ideal candidate to go inside. One and for one with a single and a walk. He's tried to make the adjustment so he can handle that pitch a little bit, and you have to think he's looking for it. See, when he throws that pitch on the outside half, he does not have the same command long term. Now, he's getting away with it tonight because he's got such incredible movement on that side, but Morton's going to have to learn to get strikes on both sides of the play. Little bit low, three balls and no strikes. It's been one of his problems here tonight. Even though he's allowed just three base hits, the Cardinals have been issued four walks. Number five. And it brings in David Freeze. Carsoup.com email the booth question. It comes from Mark in Warrington, Missouri, who was the last former Cardinals player to win a pennant as a manager. Hmm. Carsoup.com, our email of the night. I was guessing we were given a hint there. Glenn Hurdle. Fairly obvious, wasn't it? Well, they continue to show him and waiting for you, Rick, at some point to speak up and say, Clint Hurdle. <laughs> I just didn't want to state the obvious. <laughs> Remarkable run that the Rockies had that year. Thanks to Matt Holliday and his sliding in San Diego just to get themselves into the playoffs. Saw Joe Girardi on that list. Many folks do not think of him as a former Cardinal. When he was with the Cardinals, he was basically hurt the entire season. He got hurt early on, was around most of the season, just really couldn't play. And just to tell you, just a classy, classy guy. I, I mean, really got to like Joe Girardi and appreciate him and think of him as, boy, a future big league manager, no doubt, and certainly he's become that. No balls and a strike here on David Freeze with a runner at first. 
I actually worked a uh, national telecast with Joe Girardi before he got into managing with the Marlins. It was the season before that, and we were visiting about his experience in St. Louis before we went on the air, and he said he learned so much just sitting back, and he said he didn't necessarily agree with everything that Tony did. Right. You know, he wanted to be his own man, but he said the preparation that Tony LaRusso uh, used and, and what he did for every night, every game, he said was second to none. He said, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. And he was in baseball a long time as a player. You know, frankly, your, your comment about Tony is, is really just what I love about this game of baseball. Many things I love about the game, but you're not going to agree with every decision that a manager makes and or even his style of doing it. Baseball has so many options, so many ways to go that you can respect somebody's preparation. You can respect what they do in terms of winning and getting the job done. But there's a lot of ways to slice that up and a lot of ways to lead 25 men. Strikeout number two for Charlie Morton. Another pitch inside. How about that sinker again? It's got great movement on it. Cardinals know it's coming, Dan. They still can't hit it. So with two outs, trailing four to one, Yadi Molina will be the hitter. Saw a couple of the advanced scouts from the Baltimore Orioles. Here in St. Louis, we'll make our first trip to Camden Yards this year in interleague play. Have you yeah. been to Camden? I have been to Camden. Neat Joe place. McGrain got me tickets there one day. I was actually there for a volleyball tournament for my daughter, and Joe McGrain got me tickets in the nosebleed section. My former teammate, my buddy, say, my buddy. Good friend, huh? <laughs> but, you know, we had a—I mean, actually, there's not a bad seat in that house. Not really. It's a wonderful stadium. And really, that was the, the first of the stadiums that— Went back to that old time feel, but yet with the newer amenities. Had a chance to do Cal Ripken's final game that he ever played in the big leagues in a, just an unbelievable night in Baltimore. And the greats were there. His family was there. Very emotional. The way that they did it, they brought out some of the all time greats in Orioles history, and they had the entire stadium was dark. No lights with the exception of one spotlight of the great players that walked in from center field to the main stage. It was visiting Camden Yards that made me, I mean, just sold me on the idea of the Cardinals getting a new stadium. A retro stadium, too. I just I saw the fan reaction there and just the openness of the stadium, and I thought the Cardinal fans deserve this, too. As much as I love the old Bush Stadium and really had a lot of memories of that old Bush Stadium, and, you know, it's hard to except something new there's something about the fan experience there that I thought Cardinal fans should have and really made me think this new stadium idea wasn't so bad 2 2 is popped up off the bat of Molina and Yachty is 0 for 3 Cardinals go quietly in their half of the sixth 4 1 Pittsburgh.
picking up Cardinal hitters all night long. Yadier Molina pops up to end the sixth inning. You notice his hands inside the ball, but a little cramped on the inside, gets under it, and pops up the ball, does not get his arms extended, and that's what has been a successful location for Morton all night long. And Kyle Loesch has been outstanding as well. Unfortunately, a couple of mistakes in the sixth inning led to four Pirates runs. One bad inning, a couple bad pitches. That's one bad minute and a half. Yeah, man. really. But 90 seconds and the game turned. It's 4-1 Pittsburgh. Ryan Domit, Garrett Jones, and Ronnie Cedeno. Now Charlie Morton is due up fourth for the Buckos. Remember he had a few inside pitches to Kyle Loesch and then he and Domit Edwards. Kyle Loesch, by the way, is due up second for the Cardinals looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh. Definitely will be his last inning. Up the middle, base hit. Tomorrow night on the Toyota Cardinals Live pregame show, we'll bring you the cat fight with the one and only Jim Hayes. Jim hosts a trivia contest, great prizes, and you can join in the fun by stopping by the Helitech desk at Bush Stadium to be a contestant. It's the cat fight before every Tuesday home game on Toyota Cardinals Live. Our buddy Al Raboski will be on the postgame show tonight. And Either Pat, with Pat Paris. Pat Paris does such a great job with that. And a lot of games on Fox Sports Midwest this year. We're honored to have all of the Cardinal telecasts and look forward to a great season and look forward to working together with some great folks, including Mike Matheny, who's going to be doing some pre and post game. Cal Eldred does a great job as well. Jay Randolph also joining us with some features. And then there's Tom, me, and Mike Kelly. I wasn't going to go there. That'll just bring down everything. <laughs> Our outstanding producer and director. That's a strike at the knees. One ball, one strike on Garrett Jones. Remember when Jones arrived on the scene? He was just pounding the baseball. It was home run after home run. And they're still trying to find the right spot for him. Not only defensively, but also in this lineup for Pittsburgh. Gets underneath this, pops it up. The shallow right center field. Lance Berkman puts it away for the out. So always nice to have Mike Kelly and Tom Mee back together. For another season of Cardinals baseball. Two peas in a pod, aren't they? Brian Augustine getting loose for the Cardinals. And I suspect we're going to see the Cardinal left-handers a lot in this series. Trevor Miller, the incumbent left-handed short guy, and Brian Tallett, the new Cardinal left-hander, takes over for Denny's Reyes in that other second lefty spot. And with the Pirate lineup, there's not a ton of left-handed hitters, but many of their good hitters are left-handed. You look at Overbay and Alvarez in the middle of that lineup, Garrett Jones, who just popped out, Neil Walker, switch hitter, I suspect we'll see those left handers often throughout the year against the Pirates. Speaking of the bullpen were you surprised in the ball game yesterday that Jaime Garcia started that ninth inning. Well was, not only was I surprised we'd actually said he was out of the game because he was shaking hands with his teammates in the dugout which is the clear sign you're out took his hat off took his helmet off started shaking everybody's hands and he thought he was out. I mean at least he appeared that he thought he was out but after the inning changed and he actually was able to bunt and sacrifice. Tony La Russa decided to lead him in, leave him in. The Cardinals scored that extra run. And I'm okay with the decision. The problem is if Garcia has shut down mentally after thinking yeah. he's out of a game. So that was the downside of it, Dan. I mean, that could have blown up, and fortunately it didn't. Garcia regained his composure and his concentration, went out and got three quick outs. The throw over and dome it back in safely. Cedeno hit the ball through that big hole on the right side, and unfortunately, it's a big hole again. 
Schumacher has to pinch close to the bag in case there's a double play. Albert's holding the runner on, so that big hole on the right side is open. It's exactly where Cedeno shot the ball through in the sixth inning. One ball, one strike. That got things going for the Buccos in that sixth inning. It was a single by Cedeno, sacrificed by the pitcher, Morton. Tabata with a walk. He came around to score the RBI double by Walker that played it too, and then McCutcheon hit a high, towering home run that just cleared the wall and into the bullpen for the Pirates out and left. The 1 1 pitch. And you're not going to see the walk to Tabata on any highlight films anywhere after this game is over, but I wonder how important that was in that inning for Kyle Loesch after he lost Tabata. Maybe frustrated by that, Dan, then made a couple of mistakes afterwards. That walk to me and Tabata and his patience may have been just as important at bat as McCutcheon's and Walker. Bowker is on deck. Potentially could be a pinch hitter here for Charlie Morton if Cedeno stays out of a double play. Two balls, two strikes, one out, and a runner at first. Outfield is straight away. Cedeno one for two. He grounded into a 6 3 double play back in the third. In the dirt, nice block by Molina. Cardinals may see Jose Veras in the bottom of the seventh. See if they start the runner on three and two. There he goes. Ground ball hit to short. Can they turn two? Out at second. Out at first. Double play. Schumacher with that strong arm turns a double play, and it's time to stretch. Supposed to do. Don't break too soon. It's a hit and run. You know you can get to the base. You got to hold your position, and by holding it, he's able to go back, get the ball, turn the double play with Skip Schumacher, Albert digging it out. That's a picture perfect play by Ryan Terrio. Next time you want to catch a Cardinals game, head to StubHub. You'll find the seats you want and the freedom to choose where you want to sit. StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals. And this is our Chevy call to the bullpen. Jose Veras, well traveled, takes over for the Buccos. 30 year old right hander from the Dominican, played a few years in the American League with the Yankees. 
at 60 games in 2008 with the Yankees low ERA there proved to be quite a workhorse really a one inning pitcher. Last big league club last year was with the Marlins. And a good fastball 92 miles an hour and he's a part of I guess what you'd say is an improved pirate bullpen. They've got a couple of good arms out there but over the last few years it has not been. Let's just say it's not been the best bullpen in baseball. No. Let's put it kindly. Is that, is that, did I say that? Okay. Yeah, that was fine. Right. One ball, one strike here on Skip Schumacher. Skip is one for two, a ground rule double. And he also grounded out to first. Cool, chilly night here at the ballpark. Schumacher breaks his bat, little floater, shallow right. That'll get down base hit. Just the fourth hit tonight for the Redbirds. And Skip has two of them. Well, Skip had a great spring training, and he said usually when he has a good spring training, he has a good year. And a good break on this ball. He hits not really on the line. Little bloop hit in the area between the second baseman, center fielder, and right fielder. That just kind of died a hero. Here's John Jay, the pinch hitter against Barris, who closed the book on Kyle Loesch, who gives up six hits and four runs. Interesting that you say that about spring training. Some guys, if they have a track record, they'll tell you they could care less what happens in spring training. Most players would say that. And, that, and that's why it was so strange to hear Skip admit that so directly that spring training makes a difference for me. He said, he actually said to me today, you know, I, if I'm playing in the backyard with my three-year-old, I want to win. I mean, I can't, I can't say I don't care about any at bat I have, even if it's spring training. Even with the three-year-old. Even well, I, I didn't push him on that, but that's what he said. I have to give him some trouble about that. <laughs> well, it's tough love right well, there. His son's going to end up being very competitive <laughs> when he's older. He'll learn the right way from dad. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Jay. Fights it off and into the seats. John Jay, very likable young player, and all the talk we've met there about uh, Skip Schumacher, you'd certainly say he fits that mold just as likable as any player in that Cardinal dugout. All of his teammates root for him to do well. John Jay has really understood his role and his spot. He's not arrogant at all. Even though he hit 300 last year, he said, I'm here to make the team in spring training, and he meant it. And he said, I'll play when I play when I'm called upon. I'm not, I'm new here. I'm just happy to be here. I mean, I just love his attitude. What do you think the book was on Jay? Remember once the trade took place with Ludwig, Jay was on a tear initially, and then all of a sudden kind of came back down to earth. And it seemed like the league was making the adjustment on him. Yeah, I'm not sure how they were getting him out. I think they were pounding him in with fastballs was part of it. He's a pretty good breaking ball hitter, I think. And I think he was having a little bit of trouble with the fastball in. And, of course, everybody does if it's a good fastball in. 94 miles an hour. Who's, who's not going to have trouble with that? He's got a little bit of an unorthodox style at the plate. A lot of hand movement. He's got a little hitch as well right before he swings. Two and two the count. Pirate pitchers will be throwing over to first base all year with Ryan Domit behind the plate. And Jay a swing and a miss. 85 mile an hour pitch. And that's the first strikeout for Veras. Talked about the bat movement of John Jay. Wiggles the bat a lot and then the little hitch where the bat goes down and then back up again. Just his trigger to get ready, and he was ready for that pitch. He just swung through it. Redbirds with a, a short bench, and the fact that they have not put Matt Holiday on the DL. Tony LaRusso will keep Gerald Laird available, but only if something would happen here with Yadi Molina. So you're down to Descalso and Tyler Green. You hate to be hamstrung by that early on in the season by having a player on your bench that can't play. That's the, the downside. However, 
you, it's not just your ordinary player. It's Matt Holiday. If you can get a few more days out of Matt Holiday, even two or three more days, because he comes back in 12 instead of 15, it's worth it. There's Augustine, the right-hander, who had such a great spring training. Had a very good opening day, too. The other point about the roster is do you really want to bring up somebody who's just getting settled in Memphis and meeting his new teammates and figuring out where he belongs on the team and send him up here to sit on the bench for a couple of days? That doesn't make much sense either. You know, it's one of the things that we don't talk about, but these guys, Dan, are, are getting settled in cities they've never lived in before. A lot of these players, Ryan Terrio would be one. He's just trying to he's trying to learn where the grocery stores are and the gas stations and how you get on Highway 40 and I mean the players are really just getting settled and they won't be settled till they come back after their first road trip. Could be a double play ball out at second and out at first. 4-1 Pittsburgh let's head to the eighth. St. Louis is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. By Bank of America. Cardinals banking only at Bank of America. And by AT&T. Pittsburgh with a 4-1 lead. Ten hits combined. Union Station in St. Louis. Right down the road. Our call to the bullpen. Is brought to you by your Chevy dealers. Brian Augenstein takes over 6'6, 230 pounds out of Sebastian, Florida. Pitched on opening day, and his outing on that day was much like Kyle Loesch's today. He was cruising right along, got his first couple of batters out in the 11th inning of that Cardinal loss on opening day, that heartbreaking loss. And then he gave up a scratch hit, a hit, and then another hit, and the game was over. Gave up a couple of runs in that 11th inning. Cardinals had an error Ryan Terrio in that inning to make matters worse for him but really pitched well in spring training throws three quarters has good movement and a good breaking pitch. We're in the eighth and it's four to one Pittsburgh. Matt Diaz is the pinch hitter. One ball, one strike. Outfield chains him to the opposite way. And he taps it foul. One and two. Yankees winners tonight over the Minnesota Twins. Cubs over the Diamondbacks, four to one. Atlanta, as Ricky mentioned, beat Milwaukee two to one. And Baltimore over Detroit, five to one. Bottom of the sixth. Texas leading Seattle six to three. Reaching for it and hit out of play. I think if Baltimore wins another game, they're going to think they're good. 
It's dangerous when a team thinks they're good early on. Absolutely. Mike Shannon was talking on the pregame show. He said these are the kind of teams that you'd rather face a little bit later no, in the season. No doubt about that. Teams like the Pirates where not a lot is expected of Pittsburgh this year. Good pitch. Well, they're all amped up right now. I'm not sure how good they are, but they are got no negative thoughts in their mind. Once you get five, six, seven, eight games out, which is going to happen with the Pirates, then you start to doubt yourself even more, and, and you have a lot of negative experiences, and it's tough to overcome. Here's the delivery of Brian Augenstein. Sidearm with his size, Ricky, and the way that he throws, where he could be very tough on a right-hander, but yet he works from that first base side of the rubber, but you see that landing area. It stretches more towards the right-handed batter, so he's throwing across his body. Usually you want a tall pitcher to be tall because that's where you get some leverage and some downhill action, and he's not the kind of the tall and fall pitcher. He's the drop and drive pitcher, and he drops his arm down, and, you know, he becomes 5'11 when he does that. So people hear you say tall and fall. Explain that. Well, tall and fall is when a pitcher gets into his motion, turns, goes up, and has a stiff push-off leg and falls downward to the plate and takes advantage of his height so he gets that leverage. A drop and drive pitcher will bend that right leg in the case of a right handed pitcher and push more towards home plate. Have you seen any kind of transition in baseball over the years where people said OK this is a swinging bunt that rolls fair. Mm. Tabata is on base for the second time to go along with a walk but my question would be did you see where you know the momentum was OK let's be more tall and fall or let's do what you were saying with the drive the drop and drive pitch style and that ball just barely hugging the fair side of that third baseline the drop and drive was really popularized by Tom Seaver more than anybody else in the 70s and then basically all the Mets pitchers and Cincinnati Reds pitchers were taught to pitch like Tom Seaver and what they found is many of them couldn't because he had such great strength and he had such great ability to keep that strength throughout his motion out in front of him and throw that nasty slider and of course the 95 mile an hour fastball that he had it worked for him didn't work for everybody else so then you went to the tall and fall model and you know Tom House was kind of a tall and fall guy and then you had the drop and drive Tom Seaver guys and and really you see both you'll see pitchers that are successful both ways and I think pitching coaches generally now have stopped saying there's just one way to do that and we just want to see where you are most effective. Crowd tonight at 32,007. Dave Duncan is not one to give you a lot on mechanics. Now right. he'll pick up flaws, but he's more about studying that book that he keeps and more of developing that game plan going into a start or for a reliever coming in and facing a particular hitter. You know we've said that so much about Dave and I think that's true that he does not center on mechanics but what he does do is he looks for what a pitcher does to be successful and he will help you make adjustments. He's not against doing that. You know, he noticed some things about Andy Bennis one year about his cutter and he helped him develop that cutter and he became an effective pitcher again for the Cardinals. He's done that with a number of pitchers where he's made a little bit of an adjustment to help make him a better pitcher. So I don't think he centers on that. I don't think he majors on that. He more majors on how to attack the hitter. You're right. And again it certainly worked for him. He's been a pitching coach for as long as anybody in the history of this game. So I think he knows what he's talking about. and maybe headed to the Hall of Fame. Very well could be. Well Neil Walker off to a fantastic start. He has seven RBIs. In the first four games. Two here tonight as he got the Pirates on the board. I asked Dave about managing. I said, Why did you stay away from that? Why did you never think about entertaining the offers? And he said, There were offers along the way. But he said, Now in his career, Dave Duncan says, There is not a chance. He said, I don't want to deal with the media. <laughs> as far as on a daily basis. Oh, I hear you. And when you interview Dave, you get nothing but the honest truth. That is exactly right. That doesn't always work. <laughs> You're we supposed like it. to do it. We do. 
We do. Well, he's such he's kind of an enigma, too. You might catch him on a day when he's working, and he is a lot like the Cardinal first baseman. Very stoic, very serious, very short with his words, and you would say you're almost not friendly in a way. But when you get him talking about the game, when he's ready to talk about it, when he's in the right mood, he's incredibly engaging. And you can tell that Dave Duncan loves this game. You can't do what he's done for as long as he's done it without loving the game of baseball. Two sons that have made it to the major leagues. Chris Duncan, for folks outside the St. Louis market that may not know this, but Chris Duncan, who was part of the championship team of 06, is uh, doing some media work here in St. Louis. He'll be doing some baseball media work on the radio and still has aspirations of getting healthy. It's just Chris has been so mm. injured the last couple of years. A setback for him. Three balls and a strike here on Walker. Pirates picked up four runs in the sixth inning to take this 4-1 lead. When a young player gets injured before he's gotten himself settled in this game, it's such a shame. It really is. And, you know, the one thing about Chris Duncan is that he never really could find a position defensively with the Cardinals. I mean, there's a lot of guys over the last decade that have played first base that have gotten a look, and then they said, you better find a different position. Chris Duncan being one of those. So you contrast that with uh, Adam Wainwright, who's injured, who's going to have to sit out this entire season. And there's nobody concerned about Adam Wainwright coming back next year and being good. I mean, you know, he knows he can he can be incredibly effective at this level. And, and it's just a matter of getting back out on the mound. Walker, another base hit, a three hit night and runners at first and third with one out. The two singles and a double for Neil Walker. Well, he's showing he's the real deal. He came up and. The native of Pittsburgh, a local hero in that town, was a great football player as well as a baseball player in Pittsburgh, and now he's getting to play in his hometown. And there was some thoughts that, well, maybe he was just a little flash in the pan, and maybe he really wasn't the high average hitter that he showed last year, but three hits already tonight. He's off to another good start this season. You have Talent, who's getting loose for Overbay, who's on deck. And here's McCutcheon who hit a two run homer back in the sixth. A lot of communication going from the Cardinal dugout here. I think they're still learning how they want to communicate with each other. And that piece of conversation was toward the middle infielders about whether or not they wanted them to even think about double play or come home on a ball hit to them. You're already down by three. You've got a fast runner at the plate. Do you play halfway in or do you play all the way in? It looks right now that Terrio's about halfway in, although he's inching up. And a ground ball. Hit to Terrio. Play at the plate, and they got him. It keeps it four to one. Big out. If Terrio is back, he's got no shot at the runner. That ball was not hit very hard. Tony La Russa deciding to bring the infield all the way in, and Terrio right on time. Got a tough hop, throw a bit low, but Molina handles it. And that's a good break for the right-hander. And that should be his last batter. And Tony La Russa signals to the bullpen the lefty talent coming in. He'll face Lal Overbay when we return with runners at first and second and two down. The play at the plate keeps it 4 1 in favor of Pittsburgh.
cannot be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Along with Rick Horton, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Brian Tallett takes over. Last season, made five starts with the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Now considered a lefty specialist, along with Trevor Miller. He talked about scouts earlier, and one of the things that the Cardinal scouts picked up is and those who study the numbers of this game is how good he was against left-handers, even though as a starter, he got beat around quite a bit. When you're a starter, they can just put right-handers in the lineup, and that's all you face. And he had some rough outings, and the numbers were high, but against left-handers, he was tough. And they thought his arm would be suited to be in the bullpen, and the Cardinals taken a chance, and he had a good spring, good scoreless inning on opening day. Hit hard off the glove of Pools. He stays with it to Talent. And out. Somehow he stayed on the bag. And in doing so, that saved a run. Part of the lineup coming up for the Redbirds. in their dugout. Very cool evening here at Bush Stadium. All the Redbirds dressed appropriately. And they would like to heat up their bats here. There's two more chances against the Pirates. Charlie Morton, very good start. Fans bundled up as well. As the Cardinals will send Rasmus, Pujols, and Berkman against Evan Meek here in the eighth. So Colby holes Berkman Cardinals with only four hits tonight that's it the first pitch to Erasmus is taken for a strike underway here in the bottom of the eighth Meek is a hard throwing right hander Ricky outstanding season just a bit of a surprise he made the all-star team but the way you kind of construct your all-star teams now to win the game you look for guys who are eighth inning specialists maybe seventh inning specialists and meek fit that bill and last year was his first full season in the major leagues there's a broken bat into right field base hit second time that Rasmus has been aboard to go along with a walk I think Rasmus is going to hit 300 this season I just think that's going to be the number at the end of the day I think he's just a little bit more relaxed his approach to the game. He feels like he belongs at this level. Well, he's always felt like he belonged, but he feels more comfortable, let's put it that way, yeah. in his own skin and in a Cardinal uniform. And Albert can make this game interesting with one swing of the bat. Three times, Pujols has grounded out to third. What am I saying? The game's always interesting when Albert has a yeah. bat in his hand. 
On deck, Berkman. Outfield is deep for Albert. We outside. Meek was selected off of Tampa Bay's Durham roster in a Rule 5 pickup in 07. A lot like Garrett Jones coming out of nowhere. Career minor leaguer, given a chance to play at the big league level. He put up some numbers and had a good season. 70 appearances for Meek a year ago, 2.14 ERA. He had 41 appearances in 2009. And his first major league action was in 2008. Came up late in that season. Did not have success with an ERA that was close to seven and six games. Balls behind here. Two balls. No strikes on Albert. Three and oh. I am a huge Lance Berkman fan personally. Don't know what kind of year he's going to have. But I got to tell you, I'd love to have Matt Holiday in the on-deck circle right now. I think that makes a big difference in this Cardinal lineup not to have Holiday ready to play. And a walk to Pujols. Runners at first and second. And nobody out. The tying run comes to the plate in Lance Berkman. This has been the most action offensively we've had tonight, it seems like, for the Cardinals. When they've had threats, we've seen a double play. Or at times they just have not been able to advance runners or get them in a position to score. Cardinals beating the Pirate Padres behind Jaime Garcia yesterday. They only managed seven hits, two runs. Garcia, of course, through his gym. Cardinals only had runners at second base in two different innings of that game. All right, take me inside one of these conversations right here. Well, I think Ray Searge is trying to make sure that Meek is thinking about the next hitter, not the last hitter. Okay, that's okay, no problem. You become the psychologist at this point. And I know Ray played with Ray at, with the White Sox and, and also knew him with the Dodgers. And, of course, he was a Cardinal as well. But he's trying to get Meek to think about next thing, not last thing. And they're going to go over Lance Berkman and say, how are we going to get him to hit into a double play? Where are you going to go? Go to your strength. Those kind of comments... As obvious as they are, Dan, you need to hear those when you're under the stress that Evan Meek is under right now. You need somebody kind of dispassionately giving you good, solid advice, and that's what a pitching coach job is. First pitch to Berkman. And if you're thinking about a side of the plate where Berkman has better power, it's from this side of the plate. No doubt about that. Uh, he pounded the Cardinals over the years, didn't he? Mm. From the left side? Yes. And many times in this spot, Tony would bring in a lefty to face Lance Berkman and turn him around. Berkman bounces it right side, face it. Here comes Colby. He'll score to make it 4-2. to two. Pujols on his way to third. Big hit by Berkman. Mental error by the right fielder Garrett Jones throwing to the wrong base, which allows Albert Pujols to advance to third base. He was not going to go. Ground ball single. Berkman does his job. Gets the run in. But the right fielder Jones does not throw the ball to third base. So Albert alertly takes that extra base. That could be a huge huge play in this inning could end up with another cardinal run now he doesn't throw the ball to third here he throws the ball home he's got no chance of getting that runner at home albert had not decided to go to third until after that throw was made and clint hurdle has seen enough of his eighth inning specialist alan craig will come up and a chance to do some damage when we come back it's four two here at the bottom of the eighth
Jackson had a 1-2-3 inning. With the Pirates down one run, Clint Hurdle called on Crotta to pitch the seventh. And he faced the heart of the Cubs order in that game. And that part of the order had already combined to reach base six times. But he only needed eight pitches, got out of the inning. And they say he is, when he's right, a very good sinker. But his minor league totals will tell you something different. Well, he's got an incredibly high number of hits per innings pitch in the minor leagues. 780 hits in 640 innings. And a couple of years he led the league in hits given up. But it goes to show you if you throw strikes, he does not walk a lot of batters. So he'll put make the team put the ball in play but he gives up his share of hits and Alan Craig would like to add to that number and it's interesting that Clint Hurdle has shown very little patience here tonight with his eighth inning guy Evan Meek he didn't waste much time with him didn't think he looked right and made the quick decision and brought in the young and very tall right hander so Lance Berkman tonight on base four times with a pair of walks Excuse me, three times with a pair of walks and an RBI single. That's his first RBI wearing the birds on the bat. Now it's Alan Craig who has been on base three times. And this is the tall and fall variety of tall pitchers using his height. Defense would trade a double play for a run right here. Again, the alert base running of Albert Pujols, and we talk about his great hitting ability, but I just love how he has such great instincts about the game when he runs the bases. 1-0 pitch to Alan Craig. Tied him up. You would think at 6-6, six, six, if Crotta can get on top of the ball, Ricky, he'll be able to sink it. And that's what he does. He's, that's why the tall and fall works. If, if you create a flatter plane, you in some ways are helping a hitter out. But he stands tall, throws downhill, and throws that sinker for maximum leverage. Ground ball hit to short. Could be two. No. They only get one. As Sedano bobbled it, Pool scores, and it cuts a lead. Makes it a 4 3 game. Well, you talk about the importance of defense, and we do that all year long. There's no errors in this inning for the Pirates, but their defense has let their pitchers down. They let Albert take an extra base. They don't turn the double play when needed. They very easily could have been in a situation where there are two outs and a man on third, and the score would still be four to one, but now David Freeze at the plate representing go-ahead run. So the tying run at first in a 4-3 game. David Freeze has bounced into a 5-4-3 double play with runners at the corners. Nobody out back in the second. Took a fine play. The second baseman Walker to take a hit away in the fourth and then struck out swinging in the sixth. Booting that ball gives Alan Craig his third RBI of the young season. He's the kind of guy that can get some RBIs. Dan, you talked about how great it was to see him have a chance to play with Matt Holliday being out. And he's done very well here tonight. RBI, base hit, couple of walks you mentioned. Ricky, you talked about Domit and his struggles with potential base stealers. Would you even push the envelope just a little bit here, even though you have a guy that could give you the lead with one swing of the bat, David Freeze? Would you think about starting Alan Craig? Well, he's also a guy that could hit into a double play because he's not running very well in David Freeze, so that is a reason to start the runner. Craig's not the fastest of runners, but if you get the right jump and Freeze does his job, yeah, I would definitely consider it. The pitch right there is tied up freeze tonight. In on his hands. Morton lived in there. Almost a cramped looking swing. That ball is a good eight inches off the plate inside. That's not a pitch you can handle. I mean, there's no way you can hit that pitch. You've got to let that pitch go. Just looks too good to him. 
Here's a 2-1 pitch to David Fries. Molina's on deck. Will they start the runner on three and one? If I knew the signs, I'd tell you. Two hands to the birds on the chest, then something else. I don't know. Wipe it off. Let's do it again. Here we go. There goes the runner on a 3 1, a swing and a miss, and a throw to second, not in time. You're seeing this with Alan Craig in a one run game in the eighth. You may see a lot of it tomorrow and on Wednesday. Really good jump by Alan Craig. He stays low with that first step, drives towards second base. Lou Brock loves to say, you, you steal. You steal the base with your arms, which I never thought made any sense, but Lou Brock knows a little bit about stealing bases. He talks about how you've got to get your arms moving in the right direction quickly to set your legs and to stay low, and he loses me after that, but he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Here comes a 3-2 pitch, tying run at second. Freeze, a swing and a miss. So David you know. strikes out for the second time tonight, and it's up to Molina. How do you not love... Loop Rock. Think about opening day here. We had Stan out here and Red Shane needs to. We saw at the ballpark here tonight and Gibson and Brock and Whitey Herzog. It's just tremendous. Ozzie Smith. And it looks like we'll have a double switch here. Steven Pierce is coming to the ball game. He'll take over at first base. And we'll have a double switch. It's a big strike out there of David Fries. I'll tell you about the changes when we come back. Inning and try to get the final four outs and a win for Pittsburgh. The Cardinals have the tying run at second base and the go ahead and potential winning run at the plate, but the National League Central blown saves opening weekend and uh, it was rough on the NL Central. Some pretty good names on that list there. Axford is really the hope of the Brewers. Ryan Franklin, we know about his blown save on opening day, and Carlos Marmol, you don't expect him to blow any saves as nasty as he is, but. It's been a trend here in the Central Division not to be able to close out games and Hanrahan with a chance here outfield defense positioning themselves to be able to throw out a Cardinal runner at the plate. Decent arms in left right and center. Molina on the first pitch fly ball will it get out of play. It will. That pitch at 97 from Hanrahan, the former national. He could bring it. The 
They shade Molina a little bit to the opposite field. O one one pitch to Yachty. Foul ball. Nothing in two. Molina tonight is grounded out to first as they were able to get in on him. Remember, in on his hands and more of a protective swing at that time. He sees one for five against Hanrahan. He's also grounded out to third and popped out to second. Hanrahan gets a lot of strikeouts. Yachty very difficult to strike out. Sometimes the game is saved in the eighth inning, not sure the ninth is. inning. Sure is. Alan Craig is the tying run at second base. Nothing in two of the count here on Molina. Lights it off. That pitch 98 on a cold night in on your hands. Ouch. <laughs> After squatting down behind home plate for two and a half hours. Ouch. Little 98 right on your fists. That'll wake you up. Hey, but it's a great job. Yachty would tell you, hey. This is right where he wants to be. The 0 2. Check swing. He went and a strike out of Molina. Hanrahan gets the strikeout. Sends us to the ninth. We go to the ninth at Bush Stadium coming up after the game on the post game edition of Cardinals Live. Pat Paris and Al Roboski standing by. Sixth inning trouble for Kyle Loach. They'll break it down. Tony LaRusso's post game thoughts. And we know it's early, but we'll give you our World Series picks. That's coming up after the game. A quick look at Dave Duncan as we send it back to Dan and Rick. Gentlemen. A little early for World Series picks here in game four of the season. That's how that's how that's how good our post game crew is though breaking it down. Huh? That's how good Al and Pat are going to be today. Talent working in his second inning and uh, it will start with Alvarez a righty is getting loose in the bullpen. Looks like that is Ryan Franklin throwing. Ricky where is this Cardinals offense right now. Well, there's Wolves not enough hitting it. holidays out. Cardinals actually out hit the Padres even in the first two games that they lost so it's not just hits it's it's also being able to bunch the hits together. One one pitch. Albert is not at his best right now and but you so important to that offense right now. over 162 games though you can't be so dependent on oh, him to carry the team. I agree. And yes, he is off to a slow start. The first four games that could change. Well, the hot, the hottest couple swings. Yeah, the hottest Cardinal was Matt Holiday. 
Broken bat slowly hit to short. Terrio makes the play. Some comparisons to David Eckstein. Terrio's arm, which is stronger than Eckstein's. But got the uh, same kind of mechanics. Exactly. exactly. Almost a slingshot. It's a cold night here in St. Louis, but Terrio should be used to this with his time with Chicago. A lot of cold nights and a lot of cold days in Chicago. Oof. Domit one for three with a single in the seventh. He doesn't Struck want, out and also grounded out. Doesn't want to hear anybody in St. Louis complain about wind either. No. And it I'll is show you, I'll show you some wind. And this is windy. I mean, I, I look out at the flags uh, above the out-of-town scoreboard. Those are whipping right now. It's pulled foul. Cardinals lab, Schumacher, Talit spot, and then Terrio coming up. I just thought that windy conditions was very difficult for a pitcher to have his pinpoint of control. I mean, the wind actually does affect the ball even from 60 feet away, and and you your balance is affected. Can be. I think about pitching in old Candlestick Park. Very difficult to just stay straight to the plate because you felt uneasy. And yet both pitchers, both starting pitchers today, Morton had some stretches where he was off on his control, but Kyle Loach, for the most part, had really good control. Pittsburgh up by a run here, the one-two pitch in the dirt. You mentioned Candlestick and we should just think about how good was Willie Mays. <laughs> I mean, to have the amount of home runs, 660, and playing on those cold nights, candlestick. If Willie Mays played in the Phillies ballpark now oh. or in Yankee Stadium or... 800 home runs. Maybe. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Strikeout for Talent. Off-speed pitch. Domit hitting from the right side. Tries to pull that pitch. It just turned over, went away from it. So far, so good with what you've seen from Talon. Yeah. Well, he could, you know, he's only has to be, but so good. He's just got to get the lefties out, kind of be kind of in the background, just do your job and get out of there quick. And he's off to a good start. Was good in spring training as well. Here's Gary Jones. Looks at his strike. I think the worst thing that a reliever in his role could do is not have control and command. You know, Whitey Herzog used to say, if you're going to be bad, be bad quickly. You're going to give it up. Don't walk a bunch of people and hurt yourself with your defense. And, of course, I respect Whitey Herzog's knowledge of the game of baseball. And when he's trying to find a reliever, he wants somebody that can throw strikes. When you think at the Cardinal bullpen, the question is, will Mitchell Boggs and Jason Mott be those guys? Concern with Mott coming out of spring training, but it is early. There's no doubt. He's had a couple of years for track record. You figure that he'll be just fine. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. He has been blessed with a tremendous fastball. Oof. Great competitiveness, too. Reaching for it, Garrett Jones. And Albert steps on the bag. Skip Schumacher leads it off when we come back in the bottom of the night.
favor of Pittsburgh. Hanrahan trying to get the final four outs here tonight, pick up a save. Third game of the season already for Hanrahan, looking for his third save. And, you know, if you're Clint Hurdle and you've got the opportunity, Dan, you got to ride that horse. You don't have any opportunities you're going to get the closeout game, so bring in your closer early and often. And it's interesting that he would go with Hanrahan first week of the season, as you mentioned, three out of four times. But Clint Hurdle understanding, I'm sure, the losing ways and the yeah. culture said, hey, we need to get some wins. Let's change things here. Well, he's got a fan base he's trying to communicate to. He's got. Uh, I do it. I, I agree with what he's doing. One ball, one strike. When Hanrahan is rested, and when he is right, he is flat out nasty. He has had some nasty games against the Cardinals. Mentioned the strikeouts he's had a number of times, struck out the side against the Cardinals last year. Here's a one two pitch. Schumacher with a couple of base hits tonight. Ground rule double his first time up. Rounded out to first and also singled back in the seventh. Two balls, two strikes. Fights it off. Well, two run rally in the ninth inning would be a great way to end game one of this three game set. It'll be tough to do it against Hanrahan, who's been right on time in the closer role, but it could happen. 2 2. Little chopper slowly hit to first. Hanrahan is there for that all important first out. So he's recorded two outs, the last in the eighth and the first here in the ninth. Is Pierce who just checked in. Part of that double switch last inning. Flips it to Hanrahan for out number one. Here's Descalso. So right now on the bench, Cardinals essentially are down to Tyler Green. Laird is your backup catcher. And Holiday is out. Sini Descalso plays second base, third base. Made the club out of spring. That pitch at 96 from the hard throwing Hanrahan. The wheels fell off for Kyle Loesch in that sixth inning in a matter of a minute and a half. Four Pirates runs came across. It sure doesn't look like that is going to happen to Joel Hanrahan, but it could. Is there any doubt this is one of the toughest roles in sports to come off the bench on a cold night mm. and face a guy that's throwing high 90s? Scalso, no chance. That pitch at 98. He was about five miles an hour too slow for Oof. that pitch. That ball was by him by the time his bat got through the zone. Not an easy job. One two pitch. Blew it right by him again. That pitch at 97. That was Hanrahan just rearing back and saying, here you go. Budweiser player of the game, Andrew McCutcheon, one for four tonight. That one hit a big one, a two run shot. It was back in that four run sixth as he put it into the bullpen of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Cardinals on the verge of going to one and three to start this year, and Pittsburgh three and one. Post game show coming up. Here's Terry O. Rasmus on deck, and then after that, the game is extended. You'll see Pujols one more time. Ryan Terrio has grounded into a double play. He is singled. He is struck out and grounded out. High fly ball into center. This should do it. McCutcheon is there, and this game is over. The Pirates defeat the Cardinals in game one of this three-game series by the final of four to three. We step aside briefly. The postgame show 